pwede po natin ibigay para sa Kanya. Praise the Lord. Purihin po ang tawag dyan ay bad news. At sino ba naman sa atin ang may gusto niyan? Obviously, no one. Makikita po natin dyan na ang description kay Job was that he is a good man. Isang mabuting tao. At uh, ito po sana ang madidescribe ng mga tao pag binabanggit ang pangalan natin. Amen. Amen. Pangarap nyo ba yan na pag pinag-uusapan ang pangalan nyo, ang masasabi ng mga tao ay mabuting tao yan. Gano karami sa inyo ang naniniwala na yung mga katabi nyo, yan ang description. ba? Diba? Ay, agree ako dyan, Pastor. A good man, the person seated next to me is a good woman. Pero ito si Job, napakaganda ng description sa kanya sa aklat na to. He's described also as a blameless man. He's described also as a blameless man. Now, to be blameless doesn't necessarily mean sinless. Ang ibig sabihin lamang ng blameless, na sa kahanga-hanga ng kanyang pag-uugali, halos wala ka mapuna. Halos wala ka mapintas. Yun yung ibig sabihin nung blameless. At dinagdagan pa, he is thought to be a man of complete integrity. He is thought to be a man of complete integrity. Marahil, pag sinabi niya, ginagawa niya. Marahil, sa pamumuhay niya, nakikitaan siya ng kaayusan. Maare na isa itong taong respetado. 
At isa na rin siguro sa dahilan kung bakit na-describe siya na ganyan. A good man, a blameless man, a man of complete integrity is because he is also described as a man who feared God. Isang tao na may banal na pagkatakot sa Diyos. Isang tao na may banal na pagkatakot sa Diyos. He is even described as a man who stayed away from evil. A man who made an effort to stay away from evil. At pag-iisipin mo, no, bilang OFW, napakarami minsan tukso. Bilang OFW, napakarami minsan pagsubok. Hindi ganun kadali to just simply stay away from evil. Minsan lumalayo ka na, yun pa ang lumalapit sa iyo. Minsan nga sa Pilipinas, walang pumapansin sa iyo, walang naliligaw pagdating mo dito, prinsesa dating mo. <laughs> diba? May mga ganyan. Ah, sa Pilipinas, masyado minsan pihi ka ng mga tao, pansin ang timbang, pansin ang kutis, pansin lahat, ang ilong. ba diba? sa Pilipinas, nako, kailangan lahat parang mga, mga ibo ng mga ilong, kailangan lahat kaya tatangos. Pero dito, kahit mala airport ang ilong mo, hindi ka nawawala ng fans. Meron at meron. At ibang lahi pa. Mapute. Blonde ang hair. Blue eyes. Taga Peshawar, yan, Pakistan, at kung san-san pa. Aba, kahit pa lalaki, ha? Minsan nga dito, mas marami pa manliligaw ang lalaki kesa sa babae. Eh, isipin mo yun. Kaya for some people na hindi nila kaya i-handle yung ganyang klaseng attention, sometimes napakahirap talaga yung paglabanan ang tukso. Pero eto pa lang, may matututunan na tayo dito kay Job. He was the kind of man, even during his time, that stayed away from evil. And furthermore, kahanga-hanga talaga to si Job because he is also described dun sa mga verses na binasa natin as a family man. He is described in the verses that we just read as being a family man. Talaga namang kahanga-hanga iyon, yung mag-iisang mabuting asawa, mapagmahal na asawa, maging isang mabuting magulang, mapagmahal na magulang. Yan ang description kay Job. At uh, nakikita nga yung kanyang pagiging isang mabuting family man because he was also a responsible businessman. Uh, marami siyang mga naging negosyo. Ang descriptions nga dyan, balikan natin yun sa verse 2. He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, and 500 female donkeys. He also had many servants. He was in fact the richest person in that entire area. Gano karami sa inyo ang pangarap one day magkaroon din ng sariling negosyo? Pakitaas nga ang kamay. Gano karami sa inyo ang pangarap, in fact, makapag-resign na sa mga trabahong yan. Sa mga among walang kakwenta-kwenta. Sa mga katrabahong kay baho-baho. At pagdating ng araw, eh nandito sa Pilipinas. At ikaw na ngayon ang uh, boss ng iyong kumpanya. Ikaw ngayon ang mga taga-uto sa iyong empleyado. Sa mga sago at gulaman. Sa mga, di ba, fishball at kung ano-ano pa. Maliit man o malaking negosyo, pangarap nating lahat, one day, eh hindi na mga muhan. Amen. At naniniwala po kung walang imposible sa Diyos, wala, naniniwala po kung walang imposible sa Diyos, kung kalooban ng Panginoon para sa iyo magkaroon ng siriling negosyo, ibibigay yan ng Lord sa iyo. Can you tell that to one another? Nothing is impossible with God. Kapatid. Pakisabi nyo nga sa inyong katabi, posible magiging negosyante ka, kapatid. Posible yan. Posible yan. But here we also see in the story of Job that most likely this guy was a responsible businessman. Hindi lang siya basta nagsimula ng isang negosyo, he became so responsible to the, fo- to the point na ang description sa kanya that he was the richest person in that area. Pero ito po ang nakakatuwa kay Job. In spite of all of those things that was mentioned about him, that he was blameless, he was a man of integrity, he feared God, he stayed away from evil, he was a family man, and he was rich. In spite of all of those things, eh hindi siya nakalimot sa Diyos. Hindi siya nakakalimot Sa Diyos. He is also described as a prayerful man. Tingnan natin ulit yung verse 5. Ang sabi puron 
When these celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer a birth offering for each of them. For Job said to himself, Perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular practice. Nagpipray siya hindi na nga para sa kanyang sariling kasalanan, nagpipray siya para sa kanyang mga anak. So, makikita po natin dito na bukod sa hindi siya nakakalimot sa Diyos, bukod sa siya'y madasalin, eh, isa lang siya sa mabuting magulang. Isa siya mabuting magulang na hindi na lang niya iniisip yung sarili niya, iniisip niya yung kanyang mga anak. At kung paano yung mga anak din niya, ikatulad eh, niya, na lalakad sa buhay na may banal na pagkatakot sa Diyos. I would even imagine na ina-associate ni Job na kung paano man siya naging isang mayaman na negosyante, kung paano siya naging pinakamayaman in this area was because precisely of God. Because he feared God. And that's why he did not want his children not to live and think and walk in the same way. So he was prayerful. He was praying for his children all the time. At pag dun lang hihinto yung kwento, eh, iisipin natin na okay na. But then of course, most of us already know for a fact na kaya nga nakilala to si Job was because somewhere along the way, he suffered a lot. Somewhere along the way, he suffered a lot. That he became the poster boy of what it means to be a believer of God but still experience suffering. He became this uh, model of a good person experiencing bad things. That how could a good man, how could a righteous man, how could a good man suffer bad things? Why do bad things happen to good people? Mas madali kasi minsan natin isipin na yung bad person nakakaranas ng bad things kasi kasalanan niya yun, consequence. At baka nga pag nakikita mo yung nangyayari lahat yun eh, nasasabi mo pa eh, buti nga. Diba? Buti nga sa kanya kasi eh, yung, eh, samang tao yan eh, makulit yan eh. Pero yung pagalimbawa, a good man, a good person is experiencing bad things in his life, napakahirap intindi niyan. That's why we need to continue with our readings. And now with Job chapter 1, verses 6 to 22. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, Yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. All right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. One day, when Job's sons and daughters were feasting at the oldest brother's house, a messenger arrived at Job's home with this news. Your oxen were plowing with the donkeys feeding beside them when the Sabaeans raided us. They stole all the animals and killed all the farmhands. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with his news. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Three bands of Chaldean raiders have stolen your camels and killed your servants. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, 
another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in their oldest brother's home. Suddenly, a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed, and all your children are dead. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Job stood up and tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship. He said, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. Wow. Yang verses na yan, mula 6 all the way to 22. Bukod sa napakarami po nating matututunan, eh isa po ito sa ilang mga piling eksena na kasali at directly na may mention si Satan. You know, in the Bible, hindi naman ganun karami yung mga eksena na nababanggit siya. At hindi rin minsan ganun kadirect yung pagkabanggit sa kanya bilang Satan. Pero etong Job chapter 1, verses 6 to 22, uh, and the entire chapter itself, the entire chapter of uh, Job chapter 1, is one of those rare books in the Bible that he is directly mentioned, meron siyang mga sinasabi, meron siyang ginagawa, and of all places, in heaven, in the presence of God. Now, one of the things that we must realize here is na itong Job chapter 1, probably, probably, eh ito yung mga panahon na pwede pang mag-in and out si Satan sa heaven. If you remember your Sunday school stories, if you remember your uh, super book or flying house cartoons, kung inabutan nyo po yan, napanood kahit man lang sa YouTube, eh, you would recall that Satan was once upon a time known to be Lucifer. But then he rebelled against God at mula dun sa kanyang uh, uh, position of, uh, of, of honor among the angels in heaven, uh, he was pushed out of heaven by God. Pinalayas siya sa heaven. Somewhere along the way, he found himself in creation. He became this serpent, this serpent that uh, tempted even Adam and Eve. And fast forward, a Satan roaming the earth. Ang description nga sa kanya dito, dun sa mga verses na narinig natin, he is patrolling the earth. Diba? He is patrolling the earth. Uh, some New Testament verses uh, corroborates this. Kung saan sabi, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So, medyo nagaano sila, nagko-connect-connect. Pero maraming mga Bible scholars are thinking na etong panahon nito ni Job, eto pa yung mga panahon na pwede pa siyang mag in and out of heaven. Not necessarily because he had the power to do so but because God was allowing him somehow. And many Bible scholars believe na nung dumating na si Kristo at namatay na si Kristo, na resurrect na siya, hindi na po pwede yun. Many Bible scholars believe na itong binabanggit na kwento dito, ito pa yung mga moment na pwede pa yun nun. But now, no more. But going back to the story, ito ngayon si Satan, again in heaven. Again, sabi dun eh, in the presence of God. At habang nando dun siya, eh, kinausap siya ng Diyos, at sa pakipag-usap sa kanya ng Diyos, eh, meron siyang proposal. Ito si Satan, mahirap ang nagpo-propose. Medyo pangit ang mga pinopropose nito. At makikita nyo dito na ang proposal ni Satan will eventually lead to Job's downfall. Yung proposal niya sa kanyang pananaw, Pag pumayag lang ang Diyos, matutupad yung gusto niya. At ano ba yung gusto niya? Job's downfall. Which tells you many things. Which tells you many things. That this is one of the things that Satan desires. Satan desires our downfall. Satan desires our downfall. Like in the case ni Job. Maganda nangyayari sa buhay niya. Pag-iisipin mo, what a life. Family man, had a wife, had children. His children were happy. He was successful financially. He, he had religion. He was a prayerful man. He would say, that's the kind of life 
that any of us would want. Baka hindi nga, baka nga kahit pa yung hindi sobrang yaman eh, basta you could get by. Baka yung ilan sa inyo, makapagpurgod sa Pilipinas, hindi naman yung nangangad yung yaman din, yung nakakakain ka lang ng gusto mo, okay ka na doon, yung buffet araw-araw, okay ka na doon. Hindi ka naman masyado mahangad, yung nag-SM lang lagi. Hindi ka naman masyado mahagad, eh, gusto mo lang naman, eh, tatlo kotse mo, o kaya, eh, may limang bahay, may bakasyonan sa Tagaytay, o sa Batangas, simpleng buhay lang naman ang hinahangad mo. Diba? Alam mo, napakahirap, on a side note, napakahirap pag nasanay ka rin talaga sa buhay sa ibang bansa. Ha? Napakahirap pag nasanay ka sa buhay sa ibang bansa. Yung mga pamangkin ko right now as I speak, eh, ngayon ay nasa Pilipinas. Yung pamangkin ko si Xander at saka si Serena, Uh, they came here when I think Xander was three years old and Serena was two years old. Dinala ng sister ko dito. That was four years ago. Four years ago. Kaya yung uwi nila sa Pilipinas ngayon, ito yung kaunaw nila uwi sa Pilipinas after four years. Isipin mo, Serena was two. Xander was three. Kung ano mang alaala meron sila sa Pilipinas, eh, sobra nang natabunan yun dito sa Qatar. Kung nagbakasyon man yon, hindi nagbakasyon yun sa Pilipinas. Ang pinaka-recent was in Singapore and the other one was in, uh, in Hong Kong. This was their first time to return to the Philippines. The first time for them to return to our family home in a long time. Sobrang lang nasanay dito sa buhay yun sa Qatar. Hindi na nga nagtatagalog yun. English na yun ang English. Pagdating dun sa Pilipinas, kausap ko nanay ko noong isang uh, araw, kausap ko si Ria, yung nanay noong isang araw, Si Serena daw iyak ng iyak ng isang araw nung nasa banyo. Sabi ko, ba't umiiyak? Kasi sabi, there's no hot water. There's no hot water. Eh paano ba naman dumating ng Sabado? Sabado. Pagdating na pagdating sa airport, eh sinundo ng mga magulang ko, eh dahil meron silang malaking gawain, diretso sa practice sa uh, praise and worship, tapos kinabukasan, Sunday, ang worship ay alas 7 ng umaga, di siyempre magigising ng alas 5 ng umaga. Alam niyo naman siguro ang tubig sa Pilipinas ng alas 5 ng umaga. Kaya, eh yun, sanay maligo mag-isa yun eh. Sanay maligo mag-isa yun. Hindi, wala siyang kamalay-malay pagpasok niyo doon sa banyo namin na walang hot water. Walang hot water. At bukas daw nung doon umiiyaw, sabi, Mommy, there's a hot water. At hindi naman nagpapakasosyal, hindi naman nagpapakaart yun. Hindi na lang sanay. Hindi na lang sanay. Tapos kagabi lang sa Pilipinas, napakalakas. Umulan yata ng ilang beses. Eh, alam niyo naman sa Pilipinas eh. Uh, umulan o umaraw, matrapik. Eh lalo na pag umulan, tumutodo traffic. Mula yata kung saan sila nang galing bago makuwi sa bahay namin na dapat 30 minutes to 1 hour eh. 3 hours sila. Nakita ko dun sa... post sa Facebook, nakita ko pinost ni Ria. Sabi ko nga sa kanya, nakakaingit ka naman. Buti ka pa. Trapik na trapik. No? Minsan pag nasanay ka sa buhay sa abroad, nasanay ka sa buhay sa ibang bansa, tapos medyo ito eh, komportable, a little bit, ang hirap mag-adjust din doon. Ang hirap din mag- Pag nasanay kang kumikita ng ganitong kalaking pera, tapos hindi na ganun kalaki, tapos hindi ka disiplinado, ang hirap mag-adjust doon. ang hirap mag-adjust sa buhay. Kaya just imagine itong pinopropose ni Satan kay God. Na ang pinopropose niya, al- alam mo yan si, ano, si Job, eh kaya lang naman nagpipreya, kaya lang naman blameless yan kasi meron kang wall of protection sa kanya. Ang tawag doon ay hedge of protection. You know, in, in the Old Testament, there is this very unique practice called tithing. especially among the Israelites. Uh, practice nila yan. It's part of their culture. The 10% of their income, they give it to the priests. They give it to the Levites. They give it to the temple. At pag finas forward mo yung Old Testament all the way to the book of Malachi, isa sa mga sikat na chapters doon talks about ano ba yung blessing na nararanasan na nagtatayting, lalo na nung panahon nila. At isa doon sa blessing na yun, ay yung protection ng Diyos. na pag ikaw ay nagiging tapat sa pagtatights mo, nararanasan mo yung tinatawag na the wall of God's protection on your property. Kaya marahil ito si Job bilang isang blameless man, bilang isang righteous man, a, a prayerful man, 
perhaps was following all of the things in the law at that time, including tithing. Kaya siguro nararanasan niya yung the wall of God's protection. Pero ano ang proposal ni Satan? Subukan mo God, tanggalin mo sa kanya yan. At tingnan natin kung magiging blameless pa yan sa iyo. So anong dinidesire ni Satan kay Job? Yung downfall niya. Dahil ang iniisip niya, pag nawala na yung blessing, may hihirapan na yung mag-adjust at hindi na magiging tapat sa Diyos. What does this tell you also? The reality of spiritual warfare. Can everybody say with me? Spiritual warfare. Can everybody say with me? Spiritual warfare. At anong ibig sabihin na spiritual warfare? That Satan exists, evil exists, the devil exists, he is the enemy of God, he is our enemy, and he continues to move around in the earth even up to this point. At merong mga bagay na hindi maganda na nangyayari sa buhay ng isang mananampalataya, ng isang kristyano, and many times it is because of the devil's work to differentiate it from the consequences of our sin. Pag-ibahin natin yun. Pag-ibahin natin yun. May mga bagay na hindi magandang nangyayari sa buhay na isang tao, perhaps there's a logical explanation to it, it's a consequence of sin. It's a consequence of wrongdoing. It's a consequence of wrong decisions. Wala kang pwedeng masisi. Hindi mo rin pwedeng masisi demonyo dun. Wala kang ibang pwedeng masisi. Kasalanan mo yun. Halimbawa, uh, bakit nagkaganyan ang buhay mo? Eh sino ba boyfriend mo? Kasalanan mo yan. O diba? O bakit nagkaganyan ang finances mo? Nabaon ka sa utang. Eh sino may kasalanan dyan? Eh ante, tinan mo, ba, tinan mo ang cabinet mo isang katerbang bag na hindi mo naman nagagamit. Isang katerbang sapatos na hindi mo naman nasusuot. Isang katerbang mga t-shirt na hindi mo rin naman na... na pag tinansya mo, bakit? Bakit? Alam mo, ikaw ang may fault. No one to blame. Pero there's a deeper uh, thing in that. And that is, we are sinful by nature. Pinanganak tayo dito sa mundong ito, tayo makasalanan. At dahil sa kasalanan na yan, dapat pupunta tayo sa impyerno. Nakahanap na ng solusyon ang Diyos dyan by giving His Son, Jesus Christ. And through His sacrifice, through His death, through His blood, e nakatanggap tayo ng grace, forgiveness of sins. Kaya yung ultimate consequence of sin, which is our eternal damnation, o yung pagpunta ng kaluluwa natin sa impyerno, o separation from God, sa lahat ng believers of Jesus Christ, napawi na yun eh, nabago na yun eh. So paano ngayon na mayroong mga believers na katulad natin, Christians right now living on this earth, o di na makaya nung panahon ni Job, a righteous man like him, is experiencing bad things in his life, would not be because of consequence of sin, but could now be described as a satanic attack. Could now be described as a satanic attack. Napagaling ba yan? Nakaupo kayo ngayon sa mga silya ninyo. Nagmuni-muni ka, nag-isip-isip ka, you searched your heart. Malino naman eh, matino ka eh. Diba? Gano'ng karami sa inyo ngayon habang nakaupo kayo, pag kayo nagmuni-muni, matino ba ako? Hindi. Ano kaya ang sagot? Ano kaya ang sagot? Subukan nyo lang kahit mga three seconds. Sige nga, gawin ko nga yung sabi ni Pastor, magmumuni-muni ako. Matino ba ako o hindi? Pag ang... <laughs> hindi agad. Pag ang sagot sa inyo ng inyong sarili, o kumbaga eh, naku, pag kayo ay naimbita ni Boy Abunda sa kanyang mga palabas, may, may panibago na yan, may, salami, may malaking salamin na talaga ngayon yan. Pag tinanong mo yung sarili mo sa salamin, ano ang sasabihin mo sa sarili mo? Matino ka o hindi? Ano kaya ang sagot? Assuming natin, oo. Sige. For the sake of, for the sake of today's worship service lang. <laughs> Totoo, matino ka, wala ka namang sablay. O bakit may mga nangyayaring hindi maganda? Perhaps it is a satanic attack. Perhaps it is a satanic attack. Again, Job chapter 1, this time verses 6 to 11. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser Satan came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, Yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. 
He have always put a wall of protection around them and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. Now I want you to understand na itong dramatic scene na ito nangyayari lang because God was permitting Satan. This dramatic scene is happening not because Satan can do what he wants. This is happening because God is allowing it. Ito ang tatandaan natin lagi. Ano man ang nangyayari sa ating buhay, even when bad things are happening, even if it's a satanic attack, always remember this, God is always in full control. God is always in full control. Irregardless kung ano pa man yung rason ba't nagkakaganyan yung mga nangyayari sa ating buhay, o sa lugar na ito, sa ating trabaho, o sa planeta, always remember this, God is always in full control. Even the conversation that they were having, mula verse 6 all the way to verse 11, makikita natin yung pagkilos ng Lord. And now in verse 12, Job 1 verse 12, what it says, All right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses. But don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. What is this? Makikita natin yung permission ng God. At kung may pinepermit ang Diyos na mangyari, kahit pa si Satan yung naging instrument doon, huwag natin kakalimutan that God is in full control. Kung pinermit man niya, eh meron siyang greater purpose why. Now, some people have a struggle with this verse. Some people have a struggle with God allowing or permitting Satan to do harm even towards his servants, even towards good people. But there's one way I want us to realize and to read this, and this is how it is. Na makikita mo that Satan is not all-powerful. Makikita mo that Satan is even an errand boy of God na meron siyang gustong ma-accomplish na kahit si Satan, pwede niyang gamitin para ma-accomplish yung gusto niyang mangyari. Hindi man natin maintindihan sa kasalukuyan, bakit niya gagamitin pa yon, bakit niya inaalaw yung ginawa nun, but look at God telling Satan, sige, do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. What does that mean? Na kahit man may inaalaw si Lord na hindi magandang mangyari sa ating buhay, makakatiyak ka na hindi ka pababayaan ng Diyos. Makakatiyak ka na mahal ka pa rin ng Panginoon. Makakatiyak ka na yung greater purpose ng God, hindi mo pa man naiintindihan ngayon, but one day that shall be revealed and God will still be Glorified. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. God is always in full control. Amen. Pero sa kwento ni Job, chapter 1 pa lang ito, makikita po natin that the bad news came one after the other. Hindi lang isang bad news na natanggap niya, dalawa, tatlo, hanggang apat. Look again at verses 13 to 17. Job chapter 1, verses 13 to 17, where we read, One day, when Job's sons and daughters were feasting at the oldest brother's house, a messenger arrived at Job's home with this news. Your oxen were plowing, with the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabaeans raided us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farmhands. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Yung mga Sabayans, para silang mga terorista, isipin nyo na lang yun mga ISIS at kung sino-sino pang katulad niyan. They raided one of Job's businesses. Bad news number one. Verse 16. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with his news. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Kung yung bad news number one, kapwa-tao ang kumilos, bad news number two, 
Aba, natural na to, natural occurrence. At ang sabi pa nga dito eh, perhaps it is a fire that came from God. Kaya ang description eh, the fire of God has fallen from heaven. Naku, ibang usapan na to. Mukhang ang Diyos sumasali na. Bad news number three, verse 17. While he was still speaking, a third messenger arrived with his news. The bands of Chaldean raiders have stolen your camels and killed your servants. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Unti, unti, sunod, sunod na o obliterate ang lahat ng mga dahilan kung bakit siya yung naging richest man in that entire area. All of his possessions, all of his businesses, Alam mo, araw ang yama na may measure sa dami ng camel, dami ng uh, kabayo, at kung ano-ano pang mga hayop. All of that being obliterated. And as if that was not enough, there would still be bad news number four. You know, marami sa atin, naranasan ng magkaroon ng bad news. Meron sa inyo dito, e eh, minsan na nagkaroon ng mabigat na problema. Gano'ng karami sa inyo dito, na recall mo pa, fresh pa sa isipan mo, yung minsang nagkaroon ka na isang mabigat na problema. Pakitaas nga ang kamay, sini nakakaalala pa na yung parang, di ka makapaniwala, nangyayari ba ito? Hihiwalayan ba niya ako talaga? Nangyayari ba ito? Tatanggalin ba ako talaga sa trabaho? Nangyayari ba talaga ito? Ah, uh, inahabol na ba ako ng utang ko? Kung ano man yun, nangyayari ba ito? O operahan ba ako? Nangyayari ba ito? That singular moment when that happened. Pero just imagine na hindi lang isa yung problema, may sumunod pa. Hindi ka patapos dun sa isa, may sumunod. Hindi ka patapos sa pangalawa, may sumunod, tatlo. That was what was happening to Job. Siguro he could have handled one. Siguro he could have handled two. But then it was becoming three. And now it was about to become four. And this bad news was more than just about money. Alam nyo marami sa atin, di ba yung O sige, nawala, natagal ka sa trabaho, pwede ka lang mag-apply ulit. Matanggal ka man kahit dito, marami pa naman ibang bansa. O, o sa Pilipinas ka. O may babayaran, may nagkasakit, kailangan mo magpadala sa magulang mo. Ang laking gastos. Uh, may kailangan mo magpadala sa anak mo, laking gastos. Pero what do we always say? Yung pera, kikitain ulit. Pero mayroong mga bad news na ang hirap-hirap talaga i-bear. And when it becomes too personal, it becomes too much, like what happened to bad news number four for Job. Job chapter 1, verse 18 to 19 says, While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in their oldest brother's home. And suddenly a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all your children are dead. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Siguro by this moment, bukod sa ang bigat na, no? Apat na balita yan. As ang bigat pa nito, namatay lahat ng anak mo, siguro visit na visit na si Job dun sa apat na mensahero kasi bakit kayo buhay? <laughs> Di ba nakakahalata na siya? Di ba? Ang daming namatay dito, nawala ito mga kamel, ito pang apat, pati yung mga anak po. Pero bakit kayo buhay? At kayo ang nagre-report niyan sa akin. There must have been a lot of questions going on in his mind. Not only did, why did bad news number one happen, but why were all they happening all at the same time? And now, losing all his children. Tell me, marami sa inyo mga magulang na ngayon, Magkasakit lang nga ang inyong mga anak eh. Di ba hindi na kayo mapa, mapalagay? Marami sa inyo, ibibigay nyo lahat para sa inyong mga anak. Marami nga tayo ngayon, buntis eh. Ibig sabihin, uh, palabas pa lang yung mga anak ninyo, pero hindi ba't mga mahal nyo na yan? Eh, two, two weeks pa lang, lab na lab na kita anak. <laughs> Ako, praise the Lord talaga. In many parts of our church now, ang daming mga nabuntis, nagbubuntis, malapit na mga anak, Malay nyo, yung katabi nyo, malapit na rin mabuntis yan. Immaculate conception. <laughs> Wala namang ama, bigyan na buntis. O, paano nangyari yan? Baka naman hindi buntis yan, taba lang yan, kapatid. Pero hindi pa minsan, katakataka yun. Two weeks pa lang, one month, three months, pero lab na lab mo na. What more kung pinalaki mo? Alam mo, walang ano yan eh, yung... Hindi mal- I remember ozone, ozone disco. 
di ba? Binisearch ko lang yan na hindi ko talaga inabutan yan. Pero way back in 1996, I believe, may mga nag-graduate na high school at college students at nag-disco-disco as part of their graduation celebration sa Ozone Disco near uh, Timog, Tomas Morato. O, damo, alam na alam mo yan, Dan. Kung lamang ka na mga ganyang, mga ano nung araw. At nag-yuyug-yugan yung mga bata doon, ano ba yung usong kanta doon? Makarena. Yun ang usong kanta ng mga panahon na yun. No? And then, nagkaroon yata ng fire, hindi nakalabas yung mga bata, ang daming namatay. Parang mga isang daan mahigit o baka lampas pa. Basta ang daming namatay. Karamihan mga taga Tondo, Manila. Marami doon. And then a lot of write-ups came out and said, sayang naman, kakagraduate lang ng high school. Sana nakapag-college pa siya. Sayang naman, kakagraduate lang ng college. Sana nakapagtrabaho pa siya. Sayang naman, at bata pa, sana nagkapamilya pa. Sa totoo lang, pag magulang ka, kahit naman one year old lang yun eh. O elementary, o high school, college, ah, kahit pa nga siguro may sariling pamilya na yan, napakasakit sa kahit kaninong magulang na mauna pa ang mga anak niya sa kanya. Ang dapat mangyari, magulang ang mauna sa anak. Inalagaan mo, iningatan mo sa bangaw, pinakain mo, nagsakripisyo ka dyan, napakasakit mawalan ng anak. It's a pain that I do not want anybody, any parent in this room to ever feel in their lives. But Job experienced it on top of all the other bad news na naranasan niya. And look at how Job responded to all of those bad news, including to the worst that he received. Job chapter 1, verses 20 to 22. Job stood up and tore his robe in grief Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship. Verse 21 says, He said, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. How did Job respond to all of these tragedies? Like, Most of us. He tore his robe in grief. Hindi naman porkit siya blameless, siya ay a fearful man, a prayerful man. Hindi naman ibig sabihin, wala siya emosyon. Hindi naman sabihin, hindi siya tao. Hindi naman porkit believer, ibig sabihin, hindi naman sasaktan. Hindi, hindi nahihirapan. Job did what many of us would have done. Job did what many of you did. Kung naranasan niyo man, yung ilang mga trahedyang nabanggit dito. He tore his robe in grief. In ancient times, especially during their time in the Old Testament, pag pinupunit yung damit, pag sinishave yung ulo ng buhok, yung mga yon mga symbols of grieving, of mourning, and of sadness. Yung mga kalungkutan na walang kapantay, mga kalungkutan na napakahirap makonsol, yun yung ginagawa. They tore themselves to some extent Kung baga pinapakita na talaga namang pumasok tayo dito sa buhay na to walang wala eh na kahit yung suot mong damit, kahit pa may etiketa yan, kahit pa maalin yan, may mga singsing ka, may mga sapatos ka, may kotse ka, may bahay ka maganda, lahat naman yun. Darate at darate ang panahon sa ating buhay na marirealize mo, wala naman lahat yun eh. You can only appreciate it for now as God gives you the opportunity to appreciate it. Sabi sa atin sa Ecclesiastes, kung may na-enjoy ka man ngayon, magpasalamat ka sa Diyos because it is God who gives you the ability to enjoy what you have. Amen. Ayun, may mga tao, kahit naman may magandang bahay, may magandang kotse, may pera, may mga asawa, may mga anak, ano pa. Hindi naman nag enjoy yung iba dyan eh. Iba hindi nag enjoy sa marriage nila, iba hindi nag enjoy sa trabaho nila, iba hindi nag enjoy sa pera nila, iba hindi nag enjoy kahit nabili na niya yung magandang sapatos, magandang damit, isa sa pinakamahirap na kalagayan sa buhay. E wala nang makapagpasaya sa iyo. Isa rin sa pinakamahirap sa buhay yung wala ka nang makain na gusto mo, yung wala ka nang gana, hindi ka na masaya, hindi na bibili ang tunay na kaligayahan kasi Diyos lang ang pwedeng magbigay niyan. Just lang ang pwedeng magbigay niyan. Sometimes in our attempt to find it elsewhere, we will only ruin ourselves, hurt ourselves, and realize somewhere at the end. Somewhere at the end. Yang kulit ko kasi. Layo pa ako ng layo sa Diyos. Eh, alam ko rin naman sa totoo lang, sa Kanya ko lang matatagpuan ang tunay na kaligayahan. 
There are people who sometimes in their lives have what they call this moment na kailangan nilang hanapin ang kanilang sarili. Narinig nyo na ba yun? Narinig nyo na ba yun? Nasabi nyo na rin ba yun? Na, 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 nagamit nyo na ba yung script na yan? Gusto kong hanapin ang sarili ko. Grabe, naghihiwalay ang kaluluwa. <laughs> Katawan lang yung kausap natin ngayon, pero yung tunay niyang sarili, nawawala. Kaya pakitignan nyo nga ang mga katabi rinyo. Tingnan nyo nga eye to eye kasi sabi, the eyes are the window of the soul. Baka minsan nagamit niya yung script na yan, kaya baka yung katabi nyo, katawan lang yan. Yung tunay na siya, ay wala dyan ngayon. <laughs> dyan magaling minsan ang, ang, ang Pilipino eh. Kahit minsan sa Celia, sa Celia, tayo, meron tayong kakaibang pananaw sa Celia. Alam ba, may inupuan kayo sa sine, may inupuan kayo kahit sa church, o sa concert, binayaran niyo yan, o hindi, nag-toilet ka saglit, pero sasabi sa pila, ganun din. Pag pumipila ka sa restaurant, sasabihin mo sa mga tao na, uy, dyan ako ha, ako yung nandyan. To toilet lang ako. Ang galing, di ba? Kasi ang iniisip natin, nag-toilet yung katawan mo, pero yung ikaw, nandudun pa rin. <laughs> Andadun pa rin yung bag mo, nandun ka. Nandun ka. Pag biglang may dadaan at magkakamaling uupo, sasabihin mo, may may-ari niyan. Kay ano'y andyan siya. <laughs> Kaya siguro hindi ka takataka na marami sa atin. Hinahanap nga ang sarili. Baka si baka naiwan natin kung saan yan. O baka yung, yung hinahanap natin nasa kung anong bansa. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, especially in the book of Psalms, where can I go? from your spirit, how can I, it's, uh, paano ko makakalayo sa iyong pag-ibig? Lumayo man ako sa iba't ibang parte ng mundo, ando doon ka pa rin. Ando doon ka pa rin. Kaya kahit minsan, yun sa paghahanap natin ng ating sarili, lumalayo tayo sa Diyos, you only realize somewhere at the end, your efforts were futile and that you were wrong because it was always God that you will always need in your life. It will only be God that can only give you the true happiness and satisfaction in life. Sabi nga ni Job, ang lungkot-lungkot man nang nangyari. Nawala lahat ng aking negosyo. Namatay lahat ng aking mga anak. Pero ano ba naman ako, tao lang? Pumasok ako dito sa mundong itong hubad, lalabas din ako na ganun din. And sometimes only in loss. Sometimes only when we experience great tragedies. Sometimes only when God allows those things to happen to us do we get to fully realize how good and great our God is. How many blessings He has bestowed upon us. Nakakalungkot lang minsan kung kinakailangan pang makaranas tayo ng ganun para magkaroon tayo ng realization. Kaya for example, meron kayong mga trabaho hindi nyo man gusto yung mga trabahong yan. Ayaw nyo man sa inyong amo, ayaw nyo man sa inyong mga katrabaho, ayaw mo man sa bansang ito, pero kung wala namang alternative at napakabigat pa ng mga responsibilidad mo, e eh, i-appreciate mo pa rin na may trabaho ka ngayon. Amen. Magpasalamat ka pa rin sa Diyos sa kung ano meron ka. Minsan nga, pag dumadaan ng sweldo, ano ba yan? Hinipan lang sa kamay ko na wala na agad. At least may nahipan. Yung iba eh, wala nang nahihipan yan. Kahit ihip ng ihip. Well, kaya magpasalamat everybody na may trabaho, pakisabi, thank you Lord pa din. Sa lahat ng mga inis na inis sa mga amo ninyo, ano sabihin mo, thank you Lord pa din. Minsan, pati yung asawa mo, hindi mo na-appreciate. Minsan, yung napangasawa mo, hindi mo na-appreciate. Aba, napakaraming tao eh, wala niyan. Gustong gusto magkaroon niyan, hindi magkaroon-karoon. Lahat na ginawa. Sumayaw na sa ubando. Nag-like na ng napakaraming mga linalike sa, sa Facebook. Di ba? Eh, may asawa ka ngayon, magpasalamat ka pa rin sa binigay na asawa sa inang Lord kahit hindi perfect yan. Lalo na kung kasama mo ngayon sa worship service at katabi mo at pakisabi mo sa asawa mo, I thank the Lord every day for you. <laughs> pakisabi mo sa asawa mo na katabi mo ngayon, I thank the Lord every day for you. Lalong-lalo na kung ikaw si Ate Karen na nagsa-celebrate ngayon ang kanilang happy wedding anniversary. Kung ikaw naman talaga si Ate Karen na pangasawa mo si Jesus Cristo, eh kung hindi ka ba naman talaga magpa... Ay, kamukha pala! Kamukha pala! 
Uy, tontuwa kay Ate Karen, pinalabas niya yung profile pic niya, cover photo. Wedding niyo, di ba? Praise the Lord. Yung iba, ang daming na-comment. Ako, wala na ako ibang nasabi, kundi, wow. Wala na ako ibang masabi. Ibang-iba dating niyo talaga ni, ni, ano, ni Kuya Albert. Kayo talaga ang tunay, at tunay na power couple. Yan. At sa lahat ng mga may asawa ngayon, kung katabi niyo sila, pakisabi nga, I thank the Lord for you every day. Diba? I thank the Lord. Ingitin niyo yung mga single na nakapalipat sa inyo. <laughs> At makikita mo dyan, oo nga, no, praise God. Hindi ka lang maiingit dito sa katabi ko sa kanan. Talaga naman, dati walang anak. Ngayon, nako, dalawa na, may kasunod pa. Magiging babae pa yata yung taon-taon yata. Next year, ano naman? Di ba? Babae ulit. Ganon. Ay, yeah, mga anak. Mga anak. I'm sure many of you thank the Lord for the children that you have. I- I- I'm sure. You're trying to be a very, very good parent. I was talking to a couple the other day and was talking to them how it's just really so hard to have the right formula in raising children. You just try your best. You just do your very best. Basta para sa akin, nang nakita ko sa mga magulang ko, ang pinaka-importante, basta ilapit mo yung anak mo sa Diyos. Number one yun. Gawin mo lahat. Pag-aralin mo, give them a, a nice life, love them, care for them, but never forget ang number one. Ilapit mo sila sa Diyos. Ilapit mo sila But Job, I'm sure he loved his children. He prayed for his children. But now he lost them. How painful could that be? But still we see. Still we see. Though he mourned, though he grieved, you know, minsan may kinahon sila na ako na nag, na hiniwalayin siya ng boyfriend niya. Napakahirap i-console i- niyan, ha? Napakahirap. Kaya pag ako may kinakounselan na hiniwala yun ng boyfriend niya, sabi ko, sige, iyak mo lang yan. Tapos pagkatapos itong counseling natin, punuin mo yung iPad mo o yung, yung iPhone mo ng maraming mga malungkot na labsong. Tapos pakinggan mo pa ng pakinggan yun. Hanggang sa umiyak ka na umiyak gabi-gabi, araw-araw hanggang sa wala nang talab sa'yo yung mga labsong na yun, nakaka-move on ka na ulit sa buhay mo, and the rest. Well, at the same time, di ba, mag-worship ka mag Bible study ka, mag church ka, grieve but worship. Mourn but serve God. Ganon ang ginawa ni Job. He worshiped God. He praised the Lord. He recognized everything he had belongs to God. And he did not sin by blaming God. He worshiped God. He praised the Lord. He recognized everything he had belongs to God. He did not sin by blaming God. That's what he did. Nung dumating yung sunod-sunod na bad news in his life. Kaya minsan, natatawag nilang baliw ang mga mana ng palataya. Kaya minsan, natatawag tayo mga baliw na hindi nakakaintindi ng ating faith na papanong may mga hindi magandang nangyayari sa atin, nag-worship pa rin tayo, nag-serve pa rin tayo sa ministry. Sometimes we can explain it. Sometimes even the best words do not suffice. Except that a true believer of God, and in this case, tayo mga Christian, a true believer of Jesus Christ, we have this joy that not even pain can take away. We have this joy that God has given. We have this peace that God has given. We have this love that God has given. That even when tragedies do come, we have the strength to overcome. We have the strength to overcome. Now this is but chapter 1. Mula chapter 1 all the way to chapter 42, ang dami pa rin nangyari. Mga kaibigan niya na biniblame siya doon sa mga nangyari. Uh, nagkaroon din siya ng sariling mga duda, sariling mga questions, and God intervened and talked to him and, and shared to him many, many stuff. Pero ang pinakamaganda dito, that as Job maintained that kind of attitude, that even in the midst of suffering, he worshiped God, he praised the Lord. Hindi naman niya alam ano magiging ending nun eh. Tulad ng kung ngayong umaga, Ngayong tangale, sino mang nanonood ngayon, even on social media, may pinagdadaanan ka, hindi mo alam kung ano ba magiging ending niyan. But you worship God. 
you praise the Lord nonetheless. You recognize that everything belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. Tingnan mo nangyari kay Job. Job chapter 42 verse 10 to 17 tells us that when Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Then all his brothers, sisters, and former friends came and feasted with him in his home. And they consoled him and comforted him because of all the trials the Lord had brought against him. And each of them brought him a gift of money and a gold ring. So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life, even more than in the beginning. For now, he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 teams of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys. He also gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. He named his first daughter Jemima, the second Keziah, the third Kerenapuk. In all the land, no women were as lovely as the daughters of Job. And their father put them into his will along with their brothers. Job lived 140 years after that, living to see four generations of his children and grandchildren. Then he died, an old man who had lived a long, full life. Now, let me tell you immediately. Na bilang magulang, kung namatayan ka ng anak, kahit magkaroon ka ng panibagong anak, hindi na mapapalitan yung namatay mo anak. That is not the point. I'm sure Job carried that pain throughout his life. Pero ano yung pinaka lesson na makita natin dito? Na in the case ni Job, sa storya niya, na sa lahat ng mga pinagdaanan niya sa buhay, may purpose ang Diyos. Na sa lahat ng mabibigat na trahedya na nangyari sa kanya, merong plano ang Panginoon. Hindi man niya alam yun nung nangyayari yung mga trahedyang yun, but God always knows best. He always knows better. Can you say that to yourself? Today, God knows best. Pakisabi niyo nga sa inyong mga katabihan, God knows best. Pakisabi niyo sa mga nakapalibot sa inyo, may magandang future si Lord para sa iyo, kapatid. Yan. At siguro, yung pinaka lesson dito sa Job 42 verse 10 to 17, ay yung sinasabi na, the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life. The Lord, sabi sa verse 12, the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning. Ano pong ibig sabihin nun, lalo na para sa atin ngayon ng mga mananampalatayang kristyano? This reminds us of the beauty of our faith because of Jesus Christ. Nasabi nga sa 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, new things come na kung dati may mga hindi magandang nangyari sa ating buhay, ano daw lagi si Jesus Christ? He is the God of second chances. Ano daw si Jesus Christ? He is the God of second chances. Hindi natin kasi masabi, may mangyayari at mangyayari hindi maganda sa buhay natin. Hindi mo plinano, hindi mo akalain, pero nangyari o oh, nangyayari ngayon eh. Pero what is the beauty of this faith? The beauty of our faith is as God's grace is sufficient even during times of weakness. Meron mang hindi magandang nangyari sa past mo. Meron mang hindi na, magandang nangyari sa mga naunang chapters ng life mo. The beauty of our faith is this, that through Jesus Christ, there's always a second chance. That with Jesus Christ, there is redemption, forgiveness of sins, and a chance to start all over again. Uh, ang hirap naman na like ka start all over again. Ang hirap na every year gagawin mo yun. Ibig sabihin lang nun na hindi ka talaga natututo. Pero siguro sa buhay natin, dapat siguro ang chapters tatlo lang. Tatlo lang. Nag-umpisa, nagkamali. Tapos, nalaman yung pagkakamali at nagbalik loob sa Diyos. Ngayon, sige, pagbigyan natin. Natisod. So may pang-apat. Pero pag uulitin mo na naman, umabot na na sa sampung pagkakataon yan. Alam mong dapat kaltukan ka na. ba? Yung, te, gising naman. ba? Kuya. 
masyado ka nang nagiging paulit-ulit. Pero ang Panginoon, praise the Lord, stubborn ang love niya sa atin. He is the God of second chances. In the case nga ni Job, kung ano man yung hindi magandang nangyari sa kanya, hindi dahil sa mga nagawa niyang kasalanan, pero kundi sa greater purpose that God wanted to accomplish. At kung iisipin mo, fast forward in our time, this is part of that greater purpose. That in the death of his children, in the losses that he had, people like you and me here where we are now can realize that even in the midst of suffering, God is in full control. God is in full control. Now, knowing all of these things, make this your prayer for today. Make this your prayer for today. Na kung meron ka mang pinagdadaanan ngayon sa iyong buhay, na kung meron mang hindi magandang nangyayari sa buhay mo ngayon, and you're hoping for a better chapter, you're hoping for the next chapter to be better, you're believing in your heart na hindi pa tapos ang Diyos sa iyo. Amen. Can you say that to the people surrounding you? Hindi pa tapos si Lord sa iyo, kapatid. Hindi pa tapos. Kasi alam mo, kung tapos na si Lord sa iyo, patay ka na mamaya. Pag tapos na si Lord sa'yo, ta- patay ka na bukas. Do you believe hindi pa tapos si Lord sa'yo? Taas mo nga ang kamay mo nang tiyak na buhay ka pa hanggang mamaya. Yan! Praise the Lord. Hindi pa tapos si Lord sa atin. Amen! Palapakan nga natin si Lord. Lahat ng naniniwala, nanini- hindi pa tapos si Lord, palapakan nga natin ang Panginoon. Now let me just also add before we end today and make our prayer. Blessing is not just about material things. The heart of the story of Job was not just the restoration of, uh, of all of the wealth. Bagamat linino na he had more than what he had before, di ba? Dati ito lang yung sheep, ngayon 14,000. Dati ito lang yung camels, ngayon 6,000. Dati ito lang yung oxen, et naging 1,000. Dati ito lang yung donkeys, naging 1,000. Those were just being given to emphasize the fact that God can do it. Pero hindi yun yung pinaka-point ng message. Kasi pag-iisipin lang natin, lalo na ngayon bilang mga believers of Jesus Christ, Now we're only blessed if it's material. We're only blessed because it's financial. We're only blessed because of the things of this world. Then we have a very poor understanding of what our relationship with God really is. Then pag sinasabi natin sa bawat isa, you are blessed by God, you are blessed by God, you are blessed by God, that goes beyond material things. That is not even about material things. We are blessed by God because of Jesus Christ. We are blessed by God because of Jesus Christ. At ngayon dito, sa lesson na natutunan natin tungkol kay Job, ang makikita natin at pwede natin ma-apply ngayon sa ating buhay is this prayer. That no matter what is happening in my life, I will worship you, Lord, and I will remain faithful to you. I will worship you, Lord, and I will remain faithful to you. Can you say those words with me one more time? I will worship you, Lord, and I will remain faithful to you. Minsan pa po tayo yumuko, pumikit, manalangin sa Panginoon. Aming Diyos at aming Ama, salamat po sa mensaheng aming napakinggan sa umagang ito. Sa kwento ni Job, na nakita po namin na kahit dumaan siya sa mabigat na pagsubok sa buhay, eh hindi niyo po siya pinabayaan. Meron kang greater purpose. Nakita po namin na kahit inatake siya ng kaaway, inatake siya ni Satanas, Lord, hindi mo pinabayaan ang iyong anak. Kaya naniniwala kami maging sa oras na ito, kami na nag-worship together, and even those watching this on social media, Lord, I know you're speaking to your people, you're teaching us something, you're reminding us something, Help us to grasp it. Help us to understand it. Help us to be like Job, that even in the midst of many, many trials, even if bad news came one after the other, he worshipped the Lord and he did not sin by blaming God. Help us. Teach us to pick the lessons that we can get from this message. Thank you, Lord, that you are the God of second chances. Thank you, Lord, that now, because of Jesus Christ, 
there is a way by which our lives can truly become better. And that is when we know you as our Lord. That is when we know you as our Savior. Lord, we want to know you more. We want to know who you really are. We want to study your word and realize how God is so awesome and great and loving and powerful and, and holy and just. We want to know you more. Tulungan mo ang lahat ng nasa kwartong ito na ma-realize yan. Na wala kaming pwedeng takbuhan. Wala kaming pwedeng gawin na doon namin matatagpuan ng tunay na kaligayan except in God. Lord, bless your people with that realization that you alone are what we need in our lives. Mga kapatid sa Panginoon, minsan pa natin itaas sa ating mga kamay sa Kanya, we're gonna pray for blessing. Come and lift those hands to God, we're gonna pray for blessing. Itaas natin ang dalawang kamay natin sa Panginoon, mananalangin tayo. Aming Diyos at aming Ama, I pray for people in this room. I pray for the people watching this message today. Let your Holy Spirit Touch your people one by one. Magkaroon kami, Panginoon, ng spiritual restoration, spiritual revival, spiritual renewal. Yung mga hindi pa naboborn again, Lord, maborn again sila nawa in Jesus' name. Mabuhay ang kanilang espiritu at makilala kanila bilang tunay na Panginoon tagapagligtas. Na sino man sa amin na mga mana ng palataya na hayaan mo mas lalo kaming mainlab sa iyo mas lalo kami lumalim sa iyong salita, makilala, kami, makilala ka namin ng lubusan, mag-respond kami sa imbitasyon mo to come to you, give to you our burdens, to rest in your presence. Lord, thank you that even in the midst of many sufferings and pain and difficulties and questions and, and hopelessness, Lord, we can run to you. We can surrender to you. You are Jesus, you are Lord, and you are God. And so I pray that you touch everyone, that we may live a life that truly pleases God. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you, Lord, even for this message. Be glorified as we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Palapakan po natin muli ang Panginoon.